Now joining me on the Peerless Spoilers Hotline, Peerless builds America's best spoilers, three-time Stanley Cup champion. His number three hangs in the rafters in the Prudential Center for those New Jersey Devils. Now he is an MSG analyst analyzing the Rangers and the Devils in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and that is the great Kenny Danico. Kenny, Zach Gelp here, DARPATV.com in New York. Thank you for joining me, and how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Uh, pleasure to be with you. Well, thank you for coming on. Great job last night on MSG breaking down that Devils game. But a lot of suspensions have been going on in this league throughout the playoffs. You were a very tough player. You accumulated a lot of penalty minutes. You play with a lot of passion, and you were a great defensive player. If Kenny Danico was playing in either this Ottawa Rangers series or this Pittsburgh Flyers series, do you think you'd be getting a call from uh, Brandon Shanahan saying you were suspended? <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously, uh, it's gotten physical, no question. These guys uh, play with a lot of emotion and passion. And at times, you'll cross the line, and that's happened a little bit here. But uh, uh, now, I, I, I'd like to think that uh, you know, I played, I played it hard, and I played, you know, I guess on the edge, or or sometimes a little over the edge. But uh, it would be too important for me to be playing. Uh, in my mind, to try to uh, get a call or, or certainly get a suspension. So try to keep it on that line, and if I crossed it once in a while, uh, it was obviously a different game back then, but uh, you got to learn to adjust, and you certainly don't want to be missing any uh, big games. I have a problem with Brendan Shanahan. You know, I look at the Carl Haglin hit, and I only believe the reason uh, that he got three games was because Alferson got a concussion. But then you look at what Weber did, smashing a man's head into the wall. He only gets $2,500 in fines. And then the two guys from Pittsburgh, they only get a combined five games. Shanahan's got to find some consistency. I have a little bit of a problem the way that he's been suspending guys or the lack of it. How about yourself? Hacklins might have been maybe one one too many games, uh, might have given him two, but it was strictly because of exactly what you're talking about, and that does come into play. It used to not come into play, but it does come into play, the severity of the injury. And uh, Alferson was hurt. He's missing some games, so I think that came into his decision. Everyone else called Hacklins a clean player, and uh, you know, but that doesn't matter whether you make a mistake or not. And I'm sure there was no intent uh, whatsoever, but he did happen to get his arms up and his elbows up. I don't think, like I said, I really don't believe it was malicious for him. Tended on Alfredson. However, he got uh, hurt, and I think that was that was the decision there. But I think it probably could have been a little less sure. But uh, and uh, for me, the, the Weber thing's not nearly as bad as everybody's making it out to be. Uh, I know I'm a little bit old school, but. Uh, he happened to get the guy's head in the board stuff, but it was standing there. He was hit from behind originally. And, um, that's the part of the battle in the heat of the moment. So I really didn't have a, a real big problem with what went on with Shane Weber. Kreider plays his first game in replace of Carl Haglin, comes right off the, fo the frozen four where he won a championship with BC, right into NHL action in the playoffs. He played 11 minutes. How'd you view uh, uh, Kreider on the ice? We didn't get to, you know, obviously he played 11 minutes in a uh, pretty tough spot to be in, jump right in the playoffs from college hockey, but, uh, you know, I think he did it, played pretty well. Uh, you know, he, he didn't get, didn't hurt his team. That's what the main thing is when you, you come into a lineup, you just want to play solid. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of nerves involved, but uh, he's got some great potential, no question about it. He's got great speed and size, and I think he's going to feel much, much more comfortable in game two, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, like I said, at first when you get in there, you just don't want to be a liability and make a big mistake that could cost you, especially as a young player. But uh, after getting your feet wet, I'm sure game two is going to be a little more excited to possibly uh, use that speed and, and get involved offensively. Yeah, and he plays in his second game tonight. Hopefully, if you were Tortorella, would you stick with Kreider or would you go with Scott? Well, I, I don't think this game, or, or it all depends, I guess, if they dress Matt Carkner and who's a physical presence for the, for the Ottawa Senators, and he also received that one-game suspension. But, I mean, totally different players. It depends what type of game you want to play. It's Kreider's a skilled player, a speed player, and John Scott's a, a tough guy. There's no uh, mincing words there, so it depends what type of game uh, Toronto wants to play. And... Uh, uh, but, you know, probably, I think they probably have enough toughness and would probably go with a little more of a skilled player there. 
Zach Gelpier on DARPA TV talking to Devils legend Kenny Danico, number three, now an analyst with MSG. The Rangers play tonight in Ottawa, a pivotal game for Rangers looking to take a commanding 3-1 lead. And uh, Kenny, Henrik Lundqvist was phenomenal on Monday night. If you're a player in the Ottawa Senators locker room, how are you going to try to get past the King tonight because he's been so great? When a player plays that well, is it kind of in the opposing team's player's head? I think obviously uh, goaltending is mean, more than 50% of the battle in my estimation. I mean, you don't get good goaltending, doesn't matter how many good players you have, you can't win. And I don't think there's much more Ottawa can do. They have to be very pleased with the way they played in game three. The only thing they're not pleased with is the results. I mean, for the most part, they, they outplayed the Rangers if you looked at it. Uh, you know, from that perspective, as far as each period and the shots they had and the opportunities they had, and they kept the Rangers at bay. The Rangers are a very opportunistic team and was able to capitalize. But uh, Henrik Lundqvist certainly, uh, you know, is, is an all-world goaltender, one of the best in the league, and uh, he proved it to Ottawa. But, you know, all you do is you continue to fire pucks for net. You try to get traffic in front of the goalie anytime he's as good as he is. And that's all you can do. But uh, from the Ottawa center perspective, it could be frustrating, but they played a real good game. So you just have to stick with your game plan and, and hope you're able to get some of these pucks by. Like deflections also, you got to get sticks on pucks, things like that. You can't just shoot from the outside and expect to beat them. It really did look like Ottawa was going to get a goal there in that game. And then the next thing you know, a puck is taken out of the zone, off the boards. Boyle puts it right in the net. Boyle has been such a dominating force in this uh, series so far, has a goal in every single game played. If you're the Senators, how do you try to contain uh, Boyle? Because he's just really been the most dominant player on the ice besides Henrik Lundqvist. Well, again, he's been, been very opportunistic and played well. Every team wants the unlikely heroes, and you see it to uh, every playoff. It's not always your star guys. It's, it's guys that uh, are role players and, you know, that can hurt you, and, and you need them contributing if you're going to go anywhere anywhere far in the playoffs. And Brian Boyle's been that guy. He's been, you know, very solid defensively. He's, he's a physical player, but... Uh, he found some of the touch he had last year when he scored 20-plus goals this year. Didn't score as often, but uh, he's been able to ramp this game up a little bit here in the playoffs. So I don't think Ottawa does anything different. You just hope Brian Boyle's not the guy that beats you because he's not marrying Gabriker or some of the other talented guys they have or Brian Richards. Uh, and you just play, you know, play him hard like you're supposed to play everybody. But... Uh, Brian Boyle deserves credit because uh, he's a guy that is able to raise his level of his play, and that's what you need in the playoffs. You look at this Rangers power play, it's been up and down all year, usually on the downside. Is there any way you could improve on it this late into the season? Because the Rangers have just been dreadful on the power play, not only in this series, but for virtually almost the whole year. Oh, I guess. Uh, I mean, obviously, you work on practice and you work on your execution and your precision. That's all you can really do, and that's uh, as far as your passing goes. And, but anytime your power players struggle, I think, for any team, and, and uh, everybody goes through it during the season, and you just hope it gets hot at the right time in a big spot. Uh, if you're going to advance and do make some noise in the playoffs, we know the importance of special teams, but you simpl- simplify and. Uh, what coaches will tell you is a couple of quick passes and get shots through from the point and get guys crashed in the neck because it's usually not a pretty goal. And sometimes you have a tendency when you're not scoring is to get too fancy, get too cute, and try to make the perfect play, and that's when it gets worse. So it's all about simplifying, and I'm sure they've talked about it. We're talking to Kenny Danico, and Kenny, Alfredson, he may play tonight. We don't know. It looks like it's going to be a game-time decision. If you had to put a percentage on it, do you think uh, Alfredson will play? And if so, what percent and how effective will he be? Oh, pretty tough to put a percentage on it. I have no idea. I mean, obviously, it's ultimately up to him and how, how he feels. I mean, you know, look, we... It's much different than when I played because every every other guy seems to have some sort of head injury or concussion, and they know so much more about it now. I mean, in the old days, would you play? Absolutely, you'd play. And, uh, but now it's a scary situation, the fact that, you know, you've seen so many guys uh, go down with concussions, head injuries, and, and it's pretty mind-boggling at times. And I guess that's due to the speed of the game and, 
and, and the equipment, uh, the hard the equipment is and things like that. But uh, I'm sure he wants to be up there. He's been a great player for the Auto Centers and a great leader. But it's pretty tough to put up a says. I think uh, it may go off for one of them, see how he feels, and see if he's got any dizziness or some of the effects that you hear they do have with concussions. And uh, he will make that decision. But come playoff time, obviously, uh, he'd like to be out there more so than a regular season game. So even if he's hurting a little bit, uh, I would expect him to at least give it a whirl. Kenny, let's say you're a player in that Rangers locker room, and let's say Alfredson does get the go tonight. I know you never want to injure a player, but let's say if he's on that ice early, do you try to go after him early and put a hit on him? Oh, I, I don't think players think like that, especially uh, with a guy like Daniel Alfredson. Uh, players have a lot of respect for him. I think around the National Hockey League, not just in his room, you just play your regular game, but... Uh, uh, obviously, you hear a lot of the head. Yeah, if you hit him clean, that's the way it is. You hit him in the head, you're going to get suspended. That's the bottom line. So I don't think you play him any different than anybody else in the playoffs. You, you try to make everybody pay the price when the opportunity's there. And no, you're not going to let up on him, that's for sure, because if he beats you with the goal, but uh, you hit him hard, you hit him clean. That's the way the game's played. Uh, you won three Stanley Cups. I was talking to Jim Devolano last week, and I asked him, when do you kind of get that your team can win the Stanley Cup? When do you get that feel? And Jimmy told me, basically in the third round, late in the third round, when do you feel, since you won three Stanley Cups, when do you know a team has a Stanley Cup feel, and do the Rangers have that feel to you? Oh, it's tough. I'm not in the locker room. I'm not around it all the time. I mean, do I think... Uh... They have some of the ingredients to get there, sure. But these playoffs and with the competitive balance in the National Hockey League, it's a little different than 15, 20 years ago when you'd probably say, oh, two, three teams really were the only teams that had an opportunity going into the playoffs. And I was fortunate enough to be one of those teams later in my career where we were always a team that believed and, and most people believed had a shot to win the Stanley Cup. Now you believe... Uh, 12, 14 teams have a shot to win the Stanley Cup just getting into the playoffs. You see it year in, year out, where it's a surprise team. I mean, I don't think anybody in their wildest dreams would have thought the Boston Bruins were going to win the Stanley Cup last year and become an elite team the way they did. But uh, that's the, this day and age of the National Hockey League and the balance there is throughout the league. So, you know, they got one of the key ingredients that you need, and that's goaltending. So, uh, and they play. They play a pretty strong game. They don't beat themselves a lot. Very positional. Uh, the only concern I would have for them is, is do they have enough goal scoring and what it takes uh, uh, to win uh, and go four rounds and through the grind is the goal scoring. Do they have enough guys that can put the puck in the net? But having said that, if Henrik Lundqvist uh, put on a, night, uh, on a nightly basis, then you don't need to score that much. So uh, that's the main ingredient. That's the, probably the biggest reason they have an opportunity. We're talking to Kenny Danico on the Peerless Boilers Hotline. Peerless builds America's best boilers. Kenny, a few more questions right before we let you go. Martin Brodeur wasn't at his best last night. Did you like the decision from Coach Pete DeBoer to pull the world-class goaltender in last night's game? Well, I think a coach, anytime he does that, he, uh, you know, feelings or, or, you know, things like that don't go into your decision. Or, or obviously, he's got great respect for mine, like everybody does uh, for everything he's accomplished but you're just thinking about giving your team a spark and the Devils were were reeling at the time and given up three goals and uh, so I, I think uh, you know his decision was and his mind was in the right place of what he was trying to accomplish and that's like I said give the team a little different look a lift take a little bit of a time out when you put a new goaltender in there to try to get things and the momentum shifted back in your direction I thought uh, Edward came in and played a real strong game, so that wasn't the problem. Uh, they weren't able to get another goal. They had a disallowed goal that was very questionable, but uh, that's what happens sometimes in playoff hockey. Things go for you and go against you, and uh, the Devils just weren't able to sustain uh, the first six, seven minutes, which you thought at the time was going to be a 10 nothing victory. But, uh, you know, give our, our Florida some credit. They... Uh, they were able to battle back, and uh, these things happen to play us. So, you know, just uh, shake it off and move forward. He's going back to Murray tomorrow, and I would be very surprised if uh, he doesn't bounce back and have a real strong game because he's done it throughout his career. That's something he's been very good at is shaking a tough night off and uh, moving forward. 
that power play kill just wasn't great last night for the Devils. The uh, uh, the, the uh, Florida Panthers went on three power plays and got three goals. Is that something that's in your head if you're a player, knowing that your power play kill hasn't been great? Or, you know, the Devils have been a decent penalty kill team so far throughout the whole year. Do you bounce back real quickly? Well, the penalty kill has been, been shocking. I mean, that's for sure. Uh, they broke them. Record during the regular season for the best percentage in the history of the game. So it's been it's been a big surprise in the difference in the series. Florida's power play is pretty good, but uh, I mean this has been shockingly uh, an advantage in Florida's favor. Six for ten on the power play, and I don't think it's all that uh, much what the Devils aren't doing on the PK. I mean they're a little bit slower to react than they were during the regular season where they were so dominant and led the team in the league in short and goals. And it's the fact that Florida's, for some reason or another, and sometimes that happens, uh, you know, or just every shot they take seems to find the back and the matter go through a maze or, um, you know, and then that's what you want. You want to get on a roll, get on the right side of that. And I think Florida's power play has that right now. I mean, it's just like a, a hitter, a baseball hitter that gets hot, and he, the ball looks like a basketball. And right now, uh, that's the way it's going for the Devils' PK. It's shocking, there's no question, because the PK was just phenomenal during the regular season. It's something that is going to have to be better, and I'm sure they're just as puzzled as uh, everybody else watching uh, what has gone wrong in the penalty kill. But you just go back to basics, do what you did during the regular season, and you hope that... Uh, Somehow it doesn't go in the back of your net. You know, I saw Deneen's presser last night right after the game as the uh, Panthers beat the Devils, and one of the questions that was asked was who's going to be your goaltender in the next game, and he said he hasn't made up his mind. you got to think Clemenson gets the start in the next game, right? Oh, I don't think there's any question Clemenson getting the start. That's, it doesn't matter who he says, I mean, no doubt about it. Uh, Jose Kiro was like, going to be on a short lease before the series because... Clemenson uh, has played very well against the Devils in his short stints against them, and he's played five games and then has under two under two goals against average. So there's no question in my mind it'll be Clemenson, and that's just the way he approaches things. But uh, you know, I certainly don't think anything else. Kenny, thanks so much. I appreciate the time. Enjoy the games tonight and all throughout the course of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And let's get you on again real soon. I appreciate it, my man. All right, pal. Take care.